Hi, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com and in this video I'm going to tell you what I think of the Mead 70mm quadruplet apochromatic refractor. This telescope was lent to me from Ontario Telescope and Accessories for review. Uh, I was not paid to uh, endorse it by any means, uh, but I did happen to use it over the last uh, month and a half, and I must say I really enjoyed it. The glass used in the Mead 70mm Astrograph is extra low dispersion FPL 53, uh, which you may remember from that's also used in the William Optics Z61. Uh, it's, at, it's pretty much the cream of the crop when it comes to glass for refractors. So let's go over some of the specs for this scope. Uh, of course the objective, uh, the aperture is 70 millimeters. Um, the focal length is 350 millimeters, quite wide, and the uh, focal ratio is f5, so also quite fast. Out of all the uh, imaging refractors I've ever used, this happens to be the fastest one at f5. Um, the William Optics Z61 was f5.9, my Explore Scientific ED80 was f6. And I will say I did, I did notice that extra uh, speed in this scope. Um, if you saw my recent image processing tutorial in Photoshop, uh, the images I shot were um, ISO 800 at 2 minutes in length. And I don't know about you, but I saw a lot of uh, detail in a short 120 second sub. One of the biggest benefits of this uh, telescope is the lack of the need for a dedicated field flattener. Because of the quadruplet lens design, optical design, it's a completely flat field of view uh, without the need for a field flattener. So that means um, excellent color correction, uh, stars at the edge of the field will be sharp, and excellent contrast as well. No chromatic aberration. That's the color fringing and the the, uh, the purples that you might see around uh, bright stars of, uh, of say an Acromat telescope. This Mead is considered the uh, Series 6000 APO refractor series. I believe this is the smallest one of the bunch. Um, it's an excellent little scope and the price tag may uh, be a little bit surprising to you. It's a little higher than some of the other scopes in this range. Um, because the, the other scopes you're probably looking at are triplets or doublets. Like I said, this is a quad. Uh, so being that optical quadruplet design and the no field flattener, you're saving two to $300 uh, not having a, a field flattener or reducer. It also comes with a number of accessories, uh, including this padded aluminum carry case, which is great because chances are for a scope like this, you're gonna be traveling with it. Uh, as well, it comes with the 48mm to 42mm T-ring adapter for your uh, DSLR. So like I said, I use this scope with my, uh, my, cam my modified Canon Rebel T3i, and the camera sat almost right up against it, which is nice because uh, that helps for balance and uh, just as a guide point, um, you know, when you're setting things back up, it's almost right to the... If you went right in and just backed up a bit, that was pretty well in sharp focus for me anyway. If you own a full frame DSLR camera, you'll be happy to know that uh, the image circle is fully illuminated and will cover the entire sensor. Because the Mead 70mm APO is so compact and relatively lightweight, um, I believe it's about four pounds, you can mount it on a very modest equatorial mount such as the Celestron Advanced VX or the Ioptron uh, Smart EQ, I believe it's called. Uh, those are, you know, in the $500 to $700 range um, astrophotography mounts. Uh, I put this on my Skywatcher HEQ5 and uh, the counterweight sat right almost at the top because it was uh, on the very low end uh, as far as weight goes. Um, and then for auto guiding, I attached the Altair 60mm Starwave guide scope uh, into the finder scope bracket here. Uh, with the, the mini little um, Altair GP cam mono um, and that worked really well for auto guiding and did not add a lot of extra weight. 
the included dovetail bar uh, and the tube rings. Um, you can adjust them and slide the scope around for balance. Um, and then of course the dovetail will go right on to your equatorial mount. The dew shield is retractable, which is nice for packing it up small. And then uh, of course you want that dew shield for, for imaging. Um, and it's got these color matched um, caps. There's one on the back as well. The collar at the end of the focus draw tube is rotatable, which is nice for changing the orientation of your image uh, from portrait to landscape. I regret not uh, turning it on the California Nebula. I could have got that longer uh, view of the entire nebula. I got most of it. Um, it's just a bit of an odd, odd framing on that target. Of course, I'll share my images taken through this scope at the end of the video. Yeah, if you're looking for a refractor, I would say that you'll be very happy with the Mead 70mm APO. I certainly was, and that's coming from someone that's, uh, hey, I'm an Explore Scientific and William Optics fan. I, I'd never used a Mead refractor before until this one, and uh, it was basically plug and play. Like, I was able to get up and running and imaging uh, probably within 25 minutes uh, from my polar alignment. A quick balance with this scope. Uh, found focus quickly, no field flattener, razor sharp, um, locking focus. It's just, uh, it's actually a pleasure, a pleasure to use. Um, again, it's on the high end of the budget, but uh, you get a lot for that. And I truly think it's well worth it. So uh, I get some people in the comments saying uh, these are commercials, but uh, I try to ignore that and realize that there's some people trying to get some actual real value out of this video and real information because they're considering buying this telescope. And to those people, I hope this video helped you. Thanks everybody and uh, clear skies.